if you want to get money, B, C, Y, Z, even if you're one, you have to have a male co-founder. Why? Why do so? If you are two women, you have to have a, a, a male co-founder, even if it's not doing anything or had any value to just You just need a Because research has shown that female led sex don't get access. These are the things that need to change in Uganda. We need more money. And we have seen that here in Nigeria, we have. I, I can promise you, many female CEOs who are doing it, we have them not have like that. Like, we have Hala, Yemi, or these women are doing more, and they also have just recently raised one. So I feel like women need more access to money. We also need to be in in the decision making table so that we also need to advocate for ourselves and advocate for younger people. Also, we need to also put because when there was a uh, don't laugh, the national that with remote work, there was a less in sexual harassment, yeah. and in the way women were interacting. So even now, we have to come back to the office. This I wish I wish so we have to put out in place for sexual harassment and the way men relate to women in the workplaces. I know, like, there's to be honest, honest there's a way we move. It's just it's very different. They move differently in the world, and things that are very sensitive to women that they might not know. They just do that. But if you go to many companies right now, even the progressive one, I say, what is your, where is your sexual harassment policy? It's moved. So everybody will come on social media and have to gender bias together forever. But you're not very biased. You're not in any place of women. And it, it's very, very sad because you see all these things are the things that are making women not want, not making women very eager to join all these questions. So, yeah. Thank you very much. That was a lot of you added that. But, like, the question remains unanswered. What challenges do women face? I feel like it's touched on it. If we could just ask guys, what challenges do women face in the male dominated tech industry? Um, yeah. uh, I think they also face that their voice is not. Camera two. Camera two, please. Camera two, please.
with you um, because he, all, he knows most of that and most of the things around that concept. So everybody respected him on that. And I was challenging him and trying to say things. And um, he um, took it over and said, go and read up on that. And the next day, he came back and said, yes, yeah, what the friend has advertised. And all of us have respected that and then he either proved me wrong or right. And as he came back and said that I was wrong, they heard me and the only thing that they said that now the man the leader and I uh, immediately uh, stood up against that language. I am still the woman, I'm still a woman it's because I um, knew this doesn't mean I. So they can't just think about uh, or doing the right thing as a woman. They have, they have to flip it for it to make sense in their world. So these are the challenges that we face every day. You have to um, kind of come into think in the other way yeah all right thank you very much Joy. um and for that one um clear experience so i just want to add like speaking of challenges and i know damiola touched on workplace sexual harassment but yeah so sexual harassment sexual impropriety uh, major challenges that women face in male-dominated tech space. Um, between 2020 and 2021, we are stand to end grip. We actually ran a survey on workplace sexual harassment in Nigeria, and um, the figures, the results that we got were, I don't, I wouldn't even say surprising because we do know that Nigeria has, you know, an endemic of sexual harassment. Like Nigeria is a cesspool of rape culture, but despite that, it was still very, very disheartening. Um, a number, quite like a, a large number of the respondents were women and almost 90%, if not, had experienced sexual harassment in the workplace. Like how are you meant to concentrate, right, if where you're meant to do your best work is not even conducive? So workplace sexual harassment is another challenge that women face. And um, this is just a plea to everyone here, male, women, please make everywhere safer, especially the work please, because that's where people are going through pressure. You have deadlines, you know, you're trying to do your best. Okay, this is where you work and this is where you come every day. So do make everywhere safer. Do not make inappropriate comments about bodies, about clothes. Do not make sexual remarks, you know, except if encouraged, I don't know. That is another thing. And most importantly, keep your hands to yourself. Now, moving on to the next question. What are the opportunities to improve on gender equality and inclusion for women in the tech space? I'm going to start with you, Dr. Kede. What are the opportunities to improve on gender equality and inclusion for women in the tech space? Tech space. Um, so if you look at the major reasons why women are, um, why, why there's such a huge gender gap in the tech space, one of the first reasons that was listed was um, online harassment. And so a lot of women are staying away from the internet and staying away from social media to protect their sanity, keep their mental health in check and just be safe. Because if you look at the statistics of women who have been stalked, harassed, um, pictures of them put on the internet, threatened with physical or sexual violence, the rates are staggering. So you have a crop of women who are choosing to stay away and do roles that do not have any intersection with um, the digital space or with technology because they would rather, I mean, you're already dealing with um, in-person violence. Why do I have to add um, violence on the <laughs> internet on the cyberspace to that? So that already takes out a good percentage of women who would have been involved in technology. And we need to ensure that the digital space is safe and inclusive because it has been shown that, I mean, with COVID-19 and how we had to work from home and a lot of offices discovered that a lot of the things you do in the office can be done as long as you have an internet connection and you have a way to reach your colleagues. Yes, so almost 90% of jobs at the moment have a digital component. You can work remotely and all. So in the coming years, there will be a need for digital roles to, yes, to, to be had. So if we are already, um, if by the way the cyberspace is now, women are staying away because they do not want to be harassed or they don't want to experience violence on the cyberspace. So we're taking out a good chunk of women from acquiring these digital skills that will prove useful for them in the future because when 90% of jobs become 
digital-based jobs, what are they going to do? Look for roles that are physical or in-person. It may not necessarily work like that. So we have to ensure that the cyberspace is safe and it's inclusive so that women feel safe enough to work in these roles. And then we have to reach out to the younger generation. But um, the women who are already in the tech space at the moment need to do a good job of presenting themselves as role models for the younger generation to see and aspire towards because we need to amplify the work of these women who are in the tech space. You already mentioned it is already seen as a masculine space. So you hear tech bro, bro, grammar. It now had to become a case of, okay, there's something like women in tech, girls who code, you know, tech hire, all of those things to show women that, yeah, it's not a male or a masculine skill. You can learn it irrespective of your gender. So we have to do a good job of bringing role models for the younger generations to see and take an example of. We have to sensitize the younger girls as well, because if we plan to close the gender gap, we need to ensure that um, in addition to the women who are in the tech space already, we are building a budding crop of younger girls who are willing to take up spaces um, in digital and technology space. Thank you very much for that. Um, I do agree. Joyce? Sorry. You... Yeah, so what are the opportunities to improve on gender equality and inclusion for women in the tech space? What are... Yeah, um, I mean, Romod, uh, we can't really overestimate the importance of it. Um, I remember attending a conference last year um, where before then I and my colleague were asking ourselves what we want to do um, when we are 40. Um, do we want to actively code? Uh, and that was because we didn't have any role model around us or people at that age coding until we saw this um, woman from Amazon who was actively coding at maybe 40 some, uh, 50 something years. So it immediately reset our, our brand and as to what, what is possible. So I think um, encouraging younger women to um, see that this is viable, um, a viable career for them to pursue and helping them in any way possible to achieve that because it can be quite intimidating. Um, helping them through um, um, setting up um, coaching. I mean, that's mentorship, those things. Um, helps a lot to um, bring these uh, young young women up. Thank you very much, um, Joyce. Kachi, do you want to go? What are the opportunities to improve on gender equality and inclusion for women in the tech space? I, I think I'll just stand on um, sensitization because everything works on that. that you know, I just, I, I would, I would mount my senses. All right. Thank you. Damilola, how about you? I think for me, um, it's for companies and businesses to be intentional about hiring more women. You need to take a stock of what is the percentage of men and women in my businesses. Tell your hiring manager, your HR, we need this percentage of women and be very strict with it. Because this is one of the conversations we had. If you have like your hiring men and women, put a band of how much you want to pay them. Because there was the, when when we talk to area managers about how men and women negotiate when they're coming into the workspace, you see that men will come for, have one year to experience that they're asking for one millionaire. And a woman with like five years experience, like, oh, you gave me like 500K, I'm okay with that. But if your, your company is very intentional about that, you, like, you put this band, and you say, we want so so and so amount of women in our organization. We can see that Kuda Bank did something like that last year when he put an internship up and it was strictly for women. There was an outro on it on social media because people said it was, they were being biased because they wanted women only. So we also need a connection to be because the gap is already there. You hardly find a company that doesn't have more men than more women in the organization. Yeah, so a tech company. So you have to, the, the owners of the business, the CEO, the CTO, the, and the hiring managers, they have to be intentional about hiring more women into that because even if you have all the skills, you need to put it to work and it's working that you gain meaningful experience and you close that gap. So I think business is being intentional about hiring more women. Thank you very much. So business is being intentional, sensitization, role models, mentorship, coaching um, are some of the opportunities that we can use and to improve gender inclusion and equality for women in the tech space. And here, um, do you have any parting words, final words, anything? We've come to the end of the panel. <laughs> I think 
I think the, one of the things I also want to add is to put is we, women, we need to speak up for ourselves. There are women doing great things, but they're always very shy to, to speak. And there's power in our story. Our story is what brings us together. Our story is what uplifts other people around us. Even if you see, if you're an avid Twitter user, you see like the tech bros, they, they're always shouting. They're always saying, we did this, we did that. Even if most of them is clowns. And you see women that are pulling big money, doing great things, and they're just like, you're not talking. Their businesses is because I work in the Texas and I see and I and I work with a lot of female founders and VCs. And you say they are pulling in money, they are pulling in good revenues. I'm like, why are you not making noise about this? Why are you keeping this quiet? And you see businesses that have not broken even and they are shouting, but they are getting VC money because they are loud about their business. I feel like women should speak up more about not just the bad, but also the good of what they are doing. Because women are doing great things and you have. And if only about role models, I don't, I don't even think we're short of role models. There are big female role models right now in, in the tech space. You have the CEO of, of, of YouTube. You have the CEO of Bumble. Even here, you have Conke, the, the CEO of May One. You have all these women that are doing good things. I don't think we're even short of role models. You have the CEO of Spaces. So women are doing great things. We just need to be, to speak and even get yeah, more vis- visibility here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Any other person? Not I, well, it's pretty much um, tied to what she said. But we need to amplify our work more. I tell people that you could be doing an amazing thing and because you did not put it out there, nobody knows what you are doing, but you are doing an amazing thing. So um, while I, we know that uh, a lot of women have been groomed to be passive and be humble and be, yes, humble in quotes, but you need to loud it. So amplify your work. If you need to, you're putting it on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, talk about the things that you are doing because that's the only way people see that you are actually doing something and it wouldn't be known to just you and your family members and your friends. Thank you very much, Doctor. Okay, I think I would want to say that they should fight for it because um, like we have said it here, yeah, it's not just in my, it's not just happening in my company, it's not just happening in, you know, hard copy is happening everywhere. So wherever you are, you know, you have to be a voice and you have to take it by force. So you can't just wait and expect one of your boss to get the memo. You have to tell him the memo. Like you have to just tell him. So you have to take it. That's that's all. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah, um, I want to speak directly to fellow women. Um, I would say that um tech might look um, intimidating from the outside, but believe me, um, if you get past the jargons, um, it's, there is nothing to worry about and um, there is nothing too difficult in it. Thank you very much um, for that wonderful submission. And I will be rounding up again. I want to stand to end drip. So our main focus is to ensure a future where rape is no longer a part of our everyday life and experience. So I will, of course, be ending this once again, appealing to everyone. Um, If you go back to work, I don't know what you're doing after today, ask your HR, do you have a workplace sexual harassment policy? Right? Just ask. Um, If you don't, you can reach out to us, stand to ndrip.org. Oh, sorry, I am so sorry. Uh, does anyone have questions? Thank you very much. We have a wonderful lady here. We have this gentleman and we have that gentleman. And okay, yeah. So we have quite a number of questions. Um, do you take this mic to them? Do I, or is there a spare mic there? Do I take the mic? Okay. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Vivian. I work with Founder Institute Lagos. Okay, so I want to make a little contribution to what um, Dr. KD said. You're very beautiful, by the way. Um, when we, when you talked about, <laughs> yeah, I've seen her on Facebook. I maybe she she remember later. So when we talk, uh, when the panelists talked about role models in tech or women not being much in the tech world because we do not have much role model in tech. Have we considered the fact that um, there can be tech apathy among these women? 
because I've been on panel when it comes to women participation in politics and decision making. And I always tell people, if we say the society limits women from being involved in politics, have we considered that some of these women do not have any slight interest in being in politics, just like football? I'm a very big football fan, but there are women who, who don't even know how many minutes football plays for. There are women who are not interested in politics. They don't even care what happens in the government house. So have we considered that even with these role models that there are girls or women who are not just interested in tech, they want to be makeup artists and go their way. They want to do banking job. They are not really interested in what you people are seeing in tech. I think we should put that into consideration when we talk about um, society limiting women. There are still women who have tech apathy. They're not interested in your computers and anything. They're okay with making fashion designers and everything. Hi, and then, sorry, th that's a contribution. And then my question to Dami Lola, you, you, you said as at 2021, um, a women startup raised, and then the men startup raised $4 billion. So I'm asking, is being a woman, the, the, is being woman a criteria for them to raise more funds than men? Have we considered the fact that maybe their idea or the startup, it's not scalable or people are not just interested in invest, investing in that type of business, not just because they are women, that's why they raised lesser funds. It's the idea and the business they have. So I think we should put all these things into consideration before we label society as a problem for women in tech or in business. Thank, Thank you. you, Vivian. So I will just address, um, so how do you want to take it? Do you want them to ask all the questions or do you want to answer the questions one by one? I think we'll answer the questions one by one. one, by one. one. Okay, great. But just before Damnola answers the second question, I want to address Vivian's first point. So tech apathy, yes, is real, but the thing is, it is not a woman only thing. Everyone has it. Like there are a lot of people that are in other roles in the world. What we are saying is, there are still a lot of women that are being limited, right? The, the inclusion, um, the access to tech, to tech jobs, to tech opportunities, um, a lot of women are still being discriminated by it. Now, you mentioned politics, which is great. Are you aware that your law currently does not even make provisions for women to properly participate in politics. Not everyone is interested in politics. I am not interested in politics. Yet on Women's Day, I went out to protest that the lawmaker said, right, that men can have these laws. Men can have these laws, right, but women can't have it. Right? So like everyone has a part. Of course, not everyone is going to be in tech. We have men in so many other roles. But we are saying that tech is a leveling field. And women are greatly Influenced by society, number one. We all know, I mean, you've seen boys, you've seen girls. Boys are given access to, you know, science, STEM um, tools. Girls are relegated to the kitchen or wherever. What we are saying is give everyone the same access and tools. Then let anyone now choose their career path based on the interest they've been able to develop. So, um, Damilola, please yeah. answer the second question. Thank you. Okay. I'm also going to go back to your first question. Tech is, yeah, tech is not just coding. It's not just software engineering. It's not just product management. It's not just data analysts. There's sales, there's marketing, there's HR. There's the same way you have in the normal business. I think it's just the tech that throw people off. There's technology everywhere. Like even if you're working in food manufacturing, they are whole technology. So I think it's the coding thing that throws people off. So the second thing here, yeah, I understand that some businesses are not scalable. But this is research that's been done across not just Africa, but all over the world. That even when you want to get into certain VC thing, you have to have a male co-founder or you have to have a male technical co-founder. So it's not just about the business not being scalable. It's the research that's shown that female-led these startups don't get funded as much as male-led startups. Thank you. So I think that's the next question. Let's just, we have one more question. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you for uh, 
the discussion. Oh, first, uh, uh, firstly, uh, I like to think I'm a feminist so, to some extent, not the one being practicing in Nigeria though. Um, and then I said that to say this, um, I love the fact that initially I have this issue of why give women professional treatment whenever some discussions, I usually have these issues, but I realized that uh, deep down in our society here, yeah, women are really disenfranchised in many things. So you can't see, so if you put a job vacancy and you see a woman not coming out to apply for that job, it's because years long, they have made them feel like they can't come out. Hence the reason why we need to literally put some measures in place for them to come out. Hence that the case. But then there's this question, I want to play the devil advocate here now. Because you talked about why, why don't we employ more women into the workspace. You talk about the likes of Netflix putting some measures in place for women to, those women that have maybe menstrual cycles and all that, that are going to get pregnant. Now, if I am the CEO of a company and I want to employ people into my company and I don't really have funds or provisions for women, I don't have enough resources to make you comfortable, why not just employ a guy that I know will not give me stress? This is me playing the devil advocate. Why should I employ you when I know like the next few months you're going to have a lot of, in quotes, stories to tell me? Why not just even employ a guy that will not give me issues? Thank you. Uh, thank you. I feel like the thing is like we the way we measure productivity in this day and age is why we think when women on their on their period they are unproductive. They are forty weeks. They're like 40 hours in a week, at least you're supposed to, in a month, you're supposed to work. And a woman taking some days off or some hours off in a day because she wants to take care of herself. And you think that will affect your productivity. Some people go to work from nine to five and they don't even do, she just send one email. But because they are not on their period, we think they are productive. I think it's the lens you're trying to view productivity on. If a woman herself, we, we, a person that views her work and cares about her work knows that during this week, I won't be able to give as much I will give during this week. I will schedule the main things in the week before. You think it's proper planning and also the kind of person a woman is. Whether you're a man or a woman, you can be lazy. It doesn't have to do with your period. But we all we still have to put that in place that when women give the, the, the I don't use that, I don't say excuse, but when women say, I'm not going to be available, I'm not going to be able to do this because of this every month, we should give them that grace because is beyond what and is beyond them. Can I add something to that? Sorry, sorry. So when you say that um, you are thinking of hiring a woman, you're considering all of the other things you have to put in place for her to be able to be productive as opposed to just hiring a man and not having to deal with all of that, still boils down to the fact that we have carried the whole burden of childcare and abandoned it on the woman's head when she had that child with a partner. I don't think there are organizations where um, a man who has a, what, six weeks old baby is being asked, oh, oh, okay, do we need to give you um, some more hours to assist in taking care of your child? Nobody does that for the man, but it's also a parent to that child. So if we're not even splitting this burden as fair, this is also his child. He needs to be part of taking care of this child so she can have time to do other things in her life and be productive at work as well. Then we cannot now come and say, oh, okay, I might as well just hire a man. So somebody will be hiring her husband somewhere because he doesn't have to deal with childcare. While she is here, married to that man, but dealing with, okay, my company says I can't um, do this or do that, and I may have to take time off because I have the child and burden is still ties down to the fact that we're not, I mean, women are burdened with a lot of, so childcare is not primarily the woman's job. You had this child with a partner. He should pull his weight, really. I must, I must add that this is actually the exception. I've been working um, for the past five years and I haven't really experienced anyone saying they are on their period, that's why they didn't come. I, and I've actually experienced, I've experienced, I, I've experienced a CEO of mine whose uh, wife gave birth, take months out to just take care of the baby. So, um, it's the exception and it could happen to anyone. You could uh, develop a, 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 an illness that would uh, hamper your productivity. So uh, we should take us a uh, note of that. Thank you very much, um, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, we are being told that we have run out of time. 
we may not be able to take as much questions as we would like to i'm so sorry however i feel like this is a conversation that we can you know still engage in if you're interested would can they meet us outside i don't know maybe they have one or more questions so maybe you could meet us at the back or outside like i can see that man in blue there really really wants to i am so sorry um i'm once again ending this by appealing to everyone to continue to be a safe space um are we taking any more questions or can i round up they said not to worry okay so we are just going to round up okay yeah so i'm once again appealing to everyone to continue to be a safe space and what does that mean if that means that you ensure that you're not a perpetrator you are not committing any act of sexual violence you believe survivors whenever they come to you or at least you're that person that a survivor knows they can come to and get adequate support and more importantly you tell everyone around you about the importance of being in a safe space right thank you very much remember that you can reach out to us thank to Andrew on twitter and facebook if you have questions around workplace sexual harassment policies um we will be glad to help you thank you everyone my name is Bura Olablato. thanks my wonderful Picture. panelists i love you all Picture. Okay. all right thank you very much staff for this enlightening session um yeah but well unfortunately you eat up our time but we let this pass um so now the last item on our agenda is the closing remarks uh and i would like to invite our community manager who came all the way from zimbabwe to give us her closing speech um i would like to welcome topically once again because we have been here also hi everyone Hi, can I get everyone's attention? Thank you so much for great engagements. We've been deliberating on the state of digital rights and inclusion in Nigeria, and most specifically talking about how we can move towards a digitally inclusive and rights respecting Africa. Hello, everyone. Colleagues at the back, just a few minutes of your attention. We are coming to the end of our Digital Rights and Inclusion Forum 2022 here in Nigeria, and it's been a good ride for two excellent days. We've interrogated um, digital rights policy, we've engaged, we've dealt on a number of thematic areas, but more specifically, our focus has been um, joined towards um, how we can have a better space, how we can move towards a digitally inclusive and rights respecting Africa. My, my, my task right now is to just say a special thank you for everyone who has taken time out to be here. We can host a forum uh, with our partners, uh, but if no one attends those forums, then it's just an empty event. So we are the forum specifically, and we form the conversations, and we together shape what we would like to see in the future, and we strive together to get there. Um, as I mentioned that we had an you know, action-packed two days engaging and some of the conversations were exciting like the one we've just had now. And it's, and it's most critical that um, you know, we don't stop here today because we're saying we're coming to the end of the, of the forum, but we keep on doing what we do best. We keep on having these conversations and we keep on interrogating solutions that can shape our space. So a special thank you to um, our partners, Tech Hair, the Africa-China Reporting Project team, um, Keeping It Real Foundation. Please can we clap for those wonderful people. Keeping It Real Foundation, Stand to End Rape Initiative, the wonderful media that ensures that our voices go far and wide. The life alumni who have been with us for so many years, I think we saw how it began and how far we've come. 
the life legacy partners who have jumped on board and decided to work with us to collaborate with us as we together take um you know digital inclusion across the continent allow me to thank amazing attendees who have spent two full days with us you know engaging asking questions and interrogating some of the conversations distinguished panelists who have come here willing to share their expertise with us to highlight how we can you know bridge the gaps that we want to bridge and also highlighted how we can take our actions forward more specifically as well our funding partners we have enabled us to be i mean convening here without them we probably would be in our different offices doing our day-to-day -day work it is indeed a warm thank you because we don't take you for granted we don't take anyone for granted and again let me say thank you So indeed, like I mentioned, Drift 2022 Nigeria is ending now, but the work to shape policy lives on. It's what we do in our offices and what we do in our communities and how we reach out and impact lives that matters. When all has been said and done, can we look back maybe next year at the next Drift and say, okay, we've reached milestones and these are the milestones we've reached. For me, it's, it's like a little homework when, when I am at Drift to say, okay, we are engaging in conversations, then what? Um, so next year, let's, let's meet again. Let's, let's have this conversation. Let's evaluate and see, have we managed to take any meaningful steps towards changing our policies, towards ensuring that digital rights are protected, that all rights that are enjoyed offline are also enjoyed online. So we will be able to reflect on those milestones and as we evaluate the digital ecosystem. We have been doing this so far, I think this is the sixth country. We still have 11 more countries in Africa to host three sessions. Please, I invite you to join and follow our YouTube page. Please engage and see that some of the challenges that you're experiencing here in Nigeria, they are not foreign to Nigeria, but it's a problem that we're facing on the continent and see how together as a continent we can better shape our space so please um, travel well for those who are traveling and keep safe um, let's continue to light up the twitter spaces as we continue to speak with one voice towards a digitally inclusive and rights respecting africa special thank you everyone Thank you, Tobikile. And one last thing, I would like to um, let you know that we will send over uh, an evaluation. It's a link. We do have your emails, so we will send over an evaluation form, which we urge you to please fill in and give us your feedback on that. So with that, um, I will say thank you once again for coming to DRIP, and let's call it a day. Let's start our pissed okay you can go for lunch we are done but we have a provision for photograph Oh, I'm not aware of that. So um, I just learned that we are going to have uh, a group picture, everyone. So I think this will be the ideal place to, to do that. So can we please gather here and have the picture? Everybody, everybody. <laughs> please, can we come to the... to the stage. Can we come closer to the podium? Please, let's quickly do that and then go and have our lunch. People at the back, please. I don't understand. <laughs> 